and welcome back. We're going to be looking at how to use the derivative to maximize the volume of a box that we make out of a piece of paper. So let's go ahead and get started. The conditions that we have for the box are the following. We have a one meter by one meter piece of paper. We're going to cut out, like you see with these little lines, some, some length, a little, a little square, and we'll do that around the, the whole piece of paper. And X can vary, of course. I mean, it, it could just as well be that big or, or that big or something. The limits for X are going to be, uh, obviously, it has to be bigger than zero because otherwise we're not doing anything to the paper. And on the other hand, it can't be uh, half a meter because that'll just cut the piece of paper up into four squares like that. And we wouldn't be able to make a volume out of that. So, because when we're done cutting, we're just going to fold up around the area that we're, we're doing. So what we need to do is create a little equation that will describe how the volume changes when X changes. And in order to do that, we have to know, well, how is the volume when we're doing these things? And in order to do that, we have to draw a little picture in, or at least visualize in our head. I always recommend drawing pictures, though, because it, it, the picture says more than a thousand words, and it'll guide you in what you need to do. Like this one here. If you know that you have uh, a box to make, you can say, well, what is the volume? Well, it's going to be the, say, this side times that side times that side because we need to have the base area of the box and then we need to know how deep the box is or, or its height if you'd rather call it that. So now we have uh, three things that we can multiply together. That gives the area of the cube and this gives you the, the depth of it. So let's multiply those together. And then of course I prefer to multiply them all in so that we have a really nice easy thing to take the derivative of. So we multiply together, we get a third degree equation. And that third degree equation, um, as per usual, I'm going to be putting it into a, uh, a little graph writer so that we can see in our mind where this is headed. So here it is. We can see that the volume is changing. First of all, here's the zero, uh, a zero point. When we don't have a volume is when we haven't cut anything. When x is zero, we just have our piece of paper. Then on the other extreme, we have the, we choose x to be a half a meter, and that's when we cut the paper up into four equal bits. So we can't have zero, five, and we can't have zero, but everything else in between, you can see how the volume is changing. We get a volume there, and there, and there, and there, and there. As x changes, we get a different volume. So that's, that's not so strange. But you can also see that, aha, uh -huh, I remember these kind of things, max and min, we like to take the derivative and we like to see where the derivative has a zero or a, a k value, the tangent is flat. Obviously, it this has one. So what we're going to do now is just say, well, we're going to take the derivative and we're going to say then that the derivative is zero because that's the place where the tangent will have a k value of zero. And that, in this case, will be the maximum. So let's go ahead and, and solve this. You can see that it is a second degree equation. So by now, you know how to do those. I'll let you solve it any way you want, whether it's PQ or try to factor or that's up to you at this point. I've solved it. And being the little math nerd that I am, I used fractions. That's just the way I like to do these things. Um, we knew from earlier that 0 0.5 or a half is a thing that we can ignore because we won't get a volume out of that. Sure, the uh, derivative would be zero there, but it would also be a zero volume. So then that one we can ignore. This one, on the other hand, that's right about here. And you can see that that's going to line up to the, the place here where, where we're going to have 
the flat derivative. So we, we expect that to work out. Let's go ahead and take this 1 6th and we'll put it into the volume formula that we have. And then we just follow the formula. See, we need to take the 1 6th and bring it to the power of 3. And then we do this one, raise it to the power of 2, and then the x by itself. And that cleans up quite nicely. That one will give us the volume we're looking for. And as you can see, the, the volume is only a little more than 7% of a cubic meter, or about 74 milk cartons. So not terribly large compared to a cubic meter, but then there's no way we could get a cubic meter when we have one piece of paper. So, all right, I hope that helps.